OK, just a quick recap of what we've covered. Um, an object is, um, is a software representation of something in the real world. And um, uh, that's done using classes. And um, the uh, state of an object is uh, represented using uh, fields in the class. And, uh, and uh, how it behaves, uh, that is, um, that's done using uh, methods. Um, objects they tend to be nouns and methods they tend to be verbs by and large um, okay this is um, all about classes and um, you've got a class somewhere in memory and every time you do new you get a, a new object created and uh, this is the sort of um, cookie cutter analogy okay here's our first example of a class um, it's called bank account. That's the name of the class, and everything from uh, that uh, left curly bracket down to that one is part of the class. It's got fields in it, um, methods and constructors. Uh, fields describe the state, methods describe the behaviour, and the constructor makes objects of that particular type, that particular class type. Right, here's how you use. Uh, the bank account class. Um, to make a new object of that class you have to declare it. Here's account 1, it's declared to be of type bank account and use the keyword new and uh, then you pass parameters into the constructor like that. And um, here's a dot notation to access fields within a particular object. It's account 1, that object dot balance will get the balance out of there and um, you can also do use uh, that dot notation is also used with uh, with um, uh, method names and um, account one and account two are in effect their pointers to um, um, the objects and that's why if you set account 1 equal to account 2 then after you've done that they both point to account 2 like that. so if you go via account 2 and you modify some field in here then if you look at it through account 1 by magic it will also be modified and that's not a surprise because they both point to the same thing inheritance is uh, where one class extends another so effectively what you've got is um, not just uh, that, but you've also got uh, uh, this uh, class that's being extended, like kind of tagged onto the front of it. And any class that that extends also tagged onto the front. And um, if manager is a subclass of employee, then that means employee is a superclass of manager. So, so I think um, uh, you can only extend one class, and if you don't extend a class effectively, the compiler secretly takes it as being extending a special class which is called object object with a capital O that's a, a built-in class in the system I don't confuse the use of the word object there with the um, the use of the word object for a uh, thing that gets crazy when you when you do new uh, this object here is a that I'm talking about here is, is a class called object capital O. Uh, this is about variables and uh, their scope. Um, is a member variable, so also known as fields, sometimes called fields as well. Um, their scope means that they can be accessed anywhere within the class at all, even before they've they're, they're been declared. Um, these are local variables and uh, they uh, exist from the point at which they're declared to the end of the enclosing block that they're in. And uh, you can mask other variable de declarations can mask other variables basically. Um, you can mask them if you've got uh, j equals 5 declared here that would hide j equals 7 there. And uh, once they've gone out of scope, you can use them again, use the same letter again. 
uh, right this is about private um, private uh, restricts access to uh, so that only you can only get at it within within the class itself um, there are some other other um, things that can also go here instead of private there's um, something called um, public and uh, protected but uh, we cover these when we do packages and interfaces and stuff like that which is a bit later there's nothing really difficult about it um, and there's the effect it means that you can't do certain things the compiler will complain static variables um, also known as class variables um, it's a variable that belongs to the class rather than the individual object and um, it stays with the class so when you make a new object you don't get a new version of that created you, it uh, remains in the class itself um, if they're not static variables they're also known as instance variables so instance variables are in here there are also local variables of course but they're just uh, local to the um, method or, or the block within which it appears now of course uh, I'll create it on the stack and we'll talk some more about that later not only are there static uh, fields there are also static methods and um, in a static method you can only access static fields and that's because there's no pointer to any object passed in so uh, the only thing you can get out is stuff within the class and the stuff that's entirely within the class is just the static stuff and uh, you can access static methods by using the class name you just put the class name down dot followed by the static method because you don't need an object you can incidentally use the object name if you want to because it would still work but uh, you don't have to and uh, this class name followed by dot followed by um, a static field will also allow you to access static fields in the same sort of technique if you don't initialize a variable um, basically it's set to zero by default um, how do you initialize it? there are three ways uh, you can use a simple initializer like that you can use code within the constructor to initialize it and that's probably one of the most common or you can use something called an instance initialization block and that's not very common but basically it's just a block that sits inside the class that uh, you can declare variables in and um, do set various things as well like that what about static variables? Well, um, they have to be initialized before any objects are created at all. So, um, what's used there is something called a static initializer, which um, just looks like uh, uh, the previous initializer, uh, but it's got the word static in front of it. And uh, that gets run when the class is loaded, so that's before anything happens, basically. Uh, the last thing we talked about was constants and uh, they're declared using the keyword final uh, two types of constant there's the thing which is known at compile time and the thing which can't be worked out at compile time uh, if it's known at compile time you have the facility of implicit narrowing because the constant is effectively treated as a literal uh, constants tend to all to be an uppercase if there's more than one part they're separated by underscores that's just a convention um, parameters passed into uh, methods can also be uh, declared as being uh, final and what that means is you can't change its value within the uh, method but each call to the method could of course pass in a different value so it's not constant in the same sense and therefore quite often it's not in uppercase